Well, it's that time of year again. It's time for the Insomnia Project holiday episodes. I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, and I want you to listen for as long as you can until you find your way to sleep as we have a mundane, festive, fun holiday conversation. Wondering one thing that we're going to try to do is keep the conversation less than fascinating so that you can feel free to drift off. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will listen and sleep. Oh, and it looks like, yep, here we go. Is that a Christmas song? I can take us out. No, that's fine. That's that's great. That's Natasha on the uh, mouth trumpet. Is that what you would call it? Because it's my mouth and there's a trumpet. Trumpet. All right. So, friends listening to the Insomnia Project, we want you to sit back, relax, and listen as we try to have a calm conversation. And this is our one of our Christmas episodes, and I've invited back a dear friend of mine, Natasha Boomer, who you may remember from uh, the farm episode, and I wanted to talk about Christmas on the farm with you, uh, because I know that that is a different experience altogether from a lot of people in the suburbs or in the city mm-hmm. when they celebrate Christmas. So I mm-hmm. want to talk about Christmas on the farm. So tell me about Christmas on the farm. Well, Christmas on the farm, it all it changed each year. I will say that Christmas on the farm had a lot to do with my mother's internal state. Okay. So, like, sometimes we'd go out to the farm. we go out to the back. We had uh, 52 acres. That's a lot of acres. It's a lot of acre, but you can still see it. And, like, it's not as far as the eye can see. You can still see it. And um, we would go get a tree. And one year my mother decided... Where would you get the tree? On on, on the, the property? We had, we had a bit of them were forests. Okay. And one year my mother decided she will no longer be cutting down a tree. So she went herself and dragged in a dead tree, a deciduous tree. And we... Wait a minute. A deciduous tree is not an evergreen tree. Yes, I am very well aware of this. Like, like... All the leaves have fallen off. Just oh, like see. a huge skeleton branches. And then we decorated it. Was it a birch tree at least? It did was. It, look, did it, it was not white. It was brown and... So like an oak or a poplar or something, Naspen? I wish that I knew what type of tree it was. Okay. Probably just like a stand... To be honest with you, it was probably a maple. Okay, fair enough. And um, yeah, we decorated it with wishes and hopes and dreams. And that was the worst Christmas tree ever. <laughs> okay. Tell me about the best Christmas tree ever. This well, is the we Christmas had huge ceilings. Okay. I mean, it was the best Christmas tree ever for in terms of story. Like each year we all at Christmas each year we're like, "Do you remember the time you made us drag in a maple tree?" Um, but in terms of the best Christmas tree was just like the ones where you they're really you just they're huge and our downstairs was real. The one they, the one where you have to vacuum three times. After it goes up. All the pine needles, right? All the pine needles where it doesn't really fit through the door. And then it's, but it will definitely fit in the house. And then when it's over, you just chuck it over the balcony, cut it up for firewood and burn it. Oh, That's there the you the great go. thing about a farm, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, we're going to have a bonfire. We don't have a pit. That's okay that we have a hill. Let's burn a tree on a hill. All right. So, Natasha, tell me what it was like. Christmas on the farm. What was your experience like? How it was different? Was there snow? Would you wake up in the morning? Like, tell me about Christmas on the farm. Always snow. Always definitely waking up in the morning. Well, we just had a big sunken living room, and we always had, like, people sleeping over. Everyone stayed at the farm at night. and it was cousins and things? Well, more like Jim's kids, so my step- my stepbrothers and sisters. Okay. Because they didn't want to drive out on Christmas morning. So they would just come and stay Christmas Eve. And uh, Christmas Eve, we would eat till we could no longer feel. Was there something you ate on Christmas Eve? Oh, we're huge crackers and cheese family. 
My mom would make that toxic cheese whiz ball that they had in the 80s. Mm -hmm. She brought it straight into the 90s. And when no one else was doing it, she was making still cheese whiz balls. And we would watch. um, But would you not eat more than just a cheese whiz ball on Christmas Eve? Yeah. What else would you have? What would be your Christmas? Kielbasa. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah, cheese and crackers. And my mom would walk around saying there's not enough vegetables. So she'd go to the fridge and pull out some vegetables. Okay. Always, oh, you know that um, pumpernickel spinach dip? Oh, yes. Yep. It is, it's amazing, right? And that was back when pumpernickel was pumpernickel, you right. know? And spinach still had girth. Okay. And so um, we would just eat that. And then my sister and I would watch A White Christmas, sleep in the same room. Okay. Those are some of the rules. And then Christmas Day, did we go cross country skiing? Oh, that was your tradition? Uh, it was for a little bit. Or we'd go on a sleigh ride. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, because we could hook the horses up to a buggy. So you guys had a buggy on your property and you would hook your own horses mm-hmm. up? We would do one of two things. Okay. Because our horses were not very, they were not very good. Like, they weren't very trainable. For a sleigh ride horse, they got to be trained how okay. to take people behind them. So you guys would go on a wild horse sleigh ride? It was, it was, it was fine. I think okay. we did that one year, and then there was a farm up the street that actually did hay rides. So that was, that became a tradition. But your sleigh ride, did you have, you had an actual sleigh you would hook your horse up to? Yeah. And would, would you have sleigh bells on the sleigh ride? No, there was no sleigh bells. Okay. Allowed. Okay. Annoying. And then we would, my mom and my uncle all played the piano. So we'd gather around the piano. That was the thing that happened. Uh, and uh, then. And you'd sing Christmas carols? Yep. What's your favorite Christmas carol? Oh, just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ding, dingling, too. I like that one. Okay. Um, I like Christmas carols, everything but Silent Night. We always went to church. Oh, you did? That okay. That was, that was, yeah, we always went to church. And, and was it a nice church that you would go to? Like, yeah, was it, it was in St. George. It was in the village. A pretty small church or was it a large church? Yeah, it was fairly small. Okay. And um, smallish, old, because St. George is old, like 1800s. That's the town we're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a little antique town. And uh, so we'd go down there. And yeah. was that town dressed up for Christmas? Oh, always, yeah. I was in the Christmas parade once. Tell me about that. Well, I was supposed to be the Little Mermaid. This is when the Little Mermaid had just come out in the early 90s. In the Christmas play. Yeah. Well, okay. There was going to be Santa Claus and the Little Mermaid. They were trying to be, they were trying to outbeat like Burford and Paris and all those, and Glen Morris, all those small towns, right? Well, I don't know. Like, why would those small They're towns? They're the surrounding are... small towns. And right? they would do what? That they're Everyone trying to... would have a parade. Okay. And so if we could get the Little Mermaid, and so we did. And then, uh, well, we got the costume. And, and you I, and you were the Little Mermaid. And I was going to be the Little Mermaid. Okay. And then I went in in the morning to try on the costume, and it did not fit. Oh, no. And it was very disappointing. So I had to be just a chubby little Cabbage Patch Kid doll. <laughs> so who was the mermaid? I don't know. Some... Some... Girl. But did you get to ride with Santa in the parade? No, I wasn't. I was not close. I was leading out the parade. I was like the front of the parade. I was the Cabbage Patch Kid that just went around and threw candy. I don't even remember meeting Santa Claus. And where was the Little Mermaid? On the back, on the sleigh. With Santa. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't sound like a very pleasant Christmas memory. That would have been amazing because I would have been the most beautiful person in the parade. But. Now it's just a fat cat with a kid doll. Um, but it was the warmest part because it was end up being a very cold day that day. Sure. So the Little Mermaid was probably really cold. Yeah. Whereas I had leg warmers, a wig, mittens. Like I had the full. So. And it was fine. Would you have a fireplace roaring in your farm on oh, Christmas? There was three fireplaces roaring because it went up. the. So there's one downstairs and one upstairs. Um, Would you ever roast chestnuts or anything no, in the no? No chestnuts, nothing like a song. Because I don't think I roasted chestnuts until I went to Paris. Okay, so what are some of your favorite Christmas memories on the farm? Well, there was the Christmas that we decided, my cousin and I, 
decided that we're going to watch the Godfather trilogy <laughs> okay. just for the day. Because uh, the, that house was very comfortable and it was huge because we, we built an addition with my aunt. So my mom and my and her sister lived together. So it was this massive house. So all the family was always there. Right. And especially during those days. And so we would just be able to sneak away upstairs to the living room. And, and then my mom came up and she was so disappointed. How can you be watching Godfather on Christmas? But then like within an hour, she was with us till three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> eating popcorn and like um, telling us, giving us um, the rendition of where she was in the 70s when this came out. And spoiler alerts. All this is before spoiler alerts, but my mom is the queen of spoiler alerts for that movie. But um, like she would tell us the facts about the horse before it happened. I see. And we'd be like, what are you talking about? And then that scene would happen. <laughs> okay. And we're like, I'm not sure you want to be here with us, mother. Um, so those were, you know what it is about the farm? Tell me. It's the vastness and the, you have this huge house with all of these, uh, acres around you and no one's around you. Right. And you have everybody that you love under one roof, both upstairs and downstairs. You have food coming literally out of every orifice of your body because you put it in there. And all of us, those were back in the days when my mom baked, oh. right? Now she does this, I'm not going to bake because we'll just eat it. I'm like, okay, that's fair. Um, but she would bake and she'd bake all those like shortbread. They, we had a shortbread competition every year. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. My grandmother's shortbread. And then every year my stepfather would win until people would not do it anymore because he would win and his shortbread would melt in your mouth like... Ugh, anyway, and then, um, yeah, and just like, just having everyone, and then it's dark, and it's snowy, and the snow has those twinkles on it. As you look out, it's dark, and it still twinkles in, like, the light. Sure. And you're just standing there, and you're like, everybody that I love is here, and we're singing songs, and watch, and nobody goes home, and they all just stay. Those are the days that your grandmother are alive, and she's awesome. And uh, and then there was the, yeah. So it, that's Christmas on the farm. It's seclusion. You don't get that in the city. Right. In the city, everyone has to move their car by midnight. In the city, everybody has to go home because they have another. I think it's those days, too, because no one was married. Right. Everyone was a kid. So no one had another Christmas to be at. This was the only Christmas. And everybody, can, and if there was another Christmas... Everybody came to us, you know? Right. Like Jim's kids came to us. My uncle's family came to us. So you never had to pack up and leave. You could just be there and receive people as they came yeah. to celebrate I mean, Christmas. we had we had to go to dad's, my dad's, but there was very many Christmases where I, we just didn't, mm -hmm. where he just didn't call. He just, yeah, he was busy raising his own. He had a new family okay. by then. So, um, yeah, sometimes we didn't even go. Uh, to see him, so it was just literally the farm. It was great. Those do you are... do you remember any specific Christmas moments, like opening up a gift that you always wanted, or was there? A... Oh yeah, yeah, I can remember so clearly. I love New Kids on the Block. Okay, and it would have been like eighty nine, eighty eight, and um, my mother got me a huge like. What's the What's like eight by ten times six, like you know, like right. six eight by tens. Okay. In a you know, like that size. Sure. I don't know, what is that? Anyway, S sixty by yeah, sixty uh, by a thousand. Okay. This huge framed picture of Joey McIntyre, and I did not expect it in the least. And I opened it up, and I just was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this is going to be on my wall. This is amazing." And he was your favorite. Oh yeah, Joey McIntyre was my favorite. And then I can remember the Christmas where um, my mom was transitioning jobs, so I don't know. She says she's she was poor, but there's no way she was poor. Anyway, um, 
I can remember mom saying, I'm not going to get, I just wanted a beanbag chair. That's it. That was what you wanted. Oh, yeah. yeah that was one. I wanted a beanbag chair. And we opened up all the presents and it was great. My mom was very generous. We ate a lot. We Our presents were a lot of food back then. Okay. And we've since stopped all the junk and uh, we're not allowed to give food presents anymore. And um, my mom, so we're at the end and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Always grateful. That's one thing about my family. Always grateful to each other. And then uh, my mom was like, why don't you go look in the closet? And I went and looked in the closet and there was this huge beanbag chair. And I was just like, I can't believe I own a beanbag chair. Oh, wow. And it was the Christmas that I realized it didn't matter how much my mom had or didn't have. My mother's, what she took on as a job was to make sure that I had whatever I wanted, whether it was good or bad for her or me. That woman gave me everything I ever wanted. That's a beautiful Christmas memory. <laughs> it is. And yeah, it also was, I'm lucky that I also had the wherewithal to remember to like be grateful to her. Sure. Yeah. To this day, I have whatever I want. She just gave me her car. <laughs> Well, I might be spoiled. <laughs> you're very lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of presents do you like to give to your mom? Okay, so there was there, there. It's I don't you know, she's hard er to buy for. I remember as a kid in those days, the farm days, uh, she wore a lot of Vanderbilt perfume. Okay. To this day, if I smell the Vanderbilt, I will. Um, it will feel like her, without a doubt. Like the, yeah. But she doesn't wear perfumes anymore because they're, you know, toxic. Um, my mother never was a big fan of stuff. Okay. She wanted effort, right? She's like, I want to see you put in effort. And I remember a tragic Christmas when I was still, you know, you you forget that kids have to learn to be adult. They have to learn how to adult. Right. And I made my mother a bookshelf and shop glass, and uh, I painted it the night before, and she was so upset. She felt like the present was still wet. It, w it was. It was still wet. It was still tacky. And she's like, you've had this for two weeks. And uh, it was like the first time I learned that lesson of you can't just throw the, yeah, you have to think and you have to put effort in but I remember she that was the worst Christmas because she was so upset about this tacky it was a beautiful shelf but it was the lack of effort she was upset with so after that you just you just know you put in effort so now we have like experiences we give experiences to our family to oh, our that's family great. members yeah like what for example um, well, like, uh, a day, um, with like, my mom did this, um, thing, not at the farm, but like at her house now it was a spa day. Mm -hmm. And so she went and she bought like a paraffin wax. She bought like a hot rocks. She set up my table. She bought like a, my mom's a major garage sailor. So she'll buy brand new items and she knew she was going to do it. So she spent the entire summer looking for spa items. Okay. And then, um, and so we had a spa day in the basement and oh, that sounds wonderful. Feet. It was good. It was good. And um, yeah, so what else? Like, What are you making or putting effort into this year for your mom? At Christmas? Well, here's the thing. She's not going to be home this year. Oh, no. I know. So it's going to be the first Christmas ever in 42, three years that I will not. Where will she be? Well, she lives in Florida. Okay. And they're selling their house. In Florida. Yeah, so they have to wait to gin. They have to sell it mm -hmm. and then come back. But will you send her anything or will you? Well, it's her 70th birthday too. And so my sister and I are like, we're going down. Okay. But she's like, nope. Don't come down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, fair enough. I know. So it's just going to be me and my sister. What will you make for your sister? Well, we have a tradition. Okay. I a love this. Saturday morning, a Christmas morning tradition. It is uh, an egg casserole, and it is made with the – and we have it every morning. Okay. And my sister actually just texted me yesterday after Thanksgiving. She's is this like, your sister Shona, who yeah, I know? Yeah. What a beautiful name. <laughs> it is a beautiful name. It's weird, though. You don't hear it much. 
Oh, but um, have you ever heard of Shoney's? It's like a restaurant chain. chain yes. I, I think that's maybe. where I first tasted grits. Oh. It was of the Big Boy Elias uh, company. Okay. So those Big Boy and Shoney's were brother and sister. Okay. Except for Big Boy had a face. Okay. And Shoney's did not. Isn't that the patriarch? Wow. Well. And so uh, she was like, you're going to make that egg casserole, right? So here's the recipe for the egg casserole. Eggs. Yes. Hard boiled. Okay. La- it's like lasagna. Oh. Layer of. Uh, cheddar or mushroom soup, layer, layer of. of. Okay. Cheese, layer of. Does it matter what kind of cheese? No. Okay. Mozzarella is the best. So a melty cheese. Yeah. Okay. Um, what cheese are you eating that doesn't melt? Well, like a harder cheese, like a pepperoncino, pickle. I can make like... anything All right, melt. Fair enough. Um, bacon mm-hmm. or faux bacon, as our family had changed it to, because eventually okay. we all became vegetarians. Um. So bacon and then chips, uh, white, uh, like r- regular chips, all crunched up, layer okay. of. You do that three times. Oh, my goodness. Bake it. Oh, wow. It is the best ever casserole you'll ever taste. And, and you have that in the morning. Every Christmas morning since I was five, okay. kindergarten. So on the farm, you ate that too. We ate that on the farm. We ate that, and it's changed whose hands make it. And then the other tradition is cinnamon buns. Yum. Yep, and fruit bowl. I could let go of the fruit bowl tradition. Why is that? I don't like fruit. Okay. In the morning on top of egg casserole. I see. I love fruit. Anyway, that's uh, that's the, yeah, the food. And that's what you farm. do with your sister. That's what I will be doing this uh, year. We'll be making, I'll be teaching her how to make that casserole. Fantastic. It's a good casserole. It doesn't sound too hard to make. No, no. Okay. Not at all. It's a lot of prep because you got to prep the eggs and sure. prep the cheese. Because you can't buy pre, you can't buy pre-sliced, pre-grated cheese. Well, you can. No, you can't. They can. sell them in bags and Who, stuff. N- yes. And it also comes with sawdust. It's made of sawdust. Okay. Let's be real. Just slice, just get your arm and slice your own cheese. Fair enough. It's, it is fair. Unless you want to eat plastic. And let me ask you this. Which I don't. What types of gifts do you, if I were to buy you a gift. Yep. Now that we're well away from the farm. I thought this was going to be an episode of a Christmas on the farm, but we're no longer on the farm. But if I were to get you something. We can get back there. Okay. What would you most desire? If I'm on the farm? No, no. Right it doesn't now. matter. Like for Christmas, is there something, some type of gift you love to receive? Well, here's my problem. Mm-hmm. I got – I'm so tired of stuff. If you were – you know the five love languages? There's like five love languages and then you define what yours are. Okay. Like you decide what yours are. Mine's always – my number one love language is always time spent. So if you want to get me something, you get me time spent. When we're for Christmas, mm-hmm. we're going to go roller skating. And it's going to be a humiliating, brilliant experience. Boomer, for your birthday, go on a body blitz. Although you can't go there because you're a man. What is, for our listeners who have no idea, what is body blitz? It's a water therapy. So you sit in cold water, then okay. you sit in hot water, okay. then you sit in a sauna. It's hell on earth for some people. Okay. Well, you enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I haven't been for a while. Um, yeah, I like experiences. Here's a gift. I, I like to do this by gift by like a, a date night for couples. So you get like a gift card to a restaurant, sure. gift card to a – I like gift cards in a big bucket. Um, I'll tell you what. Yeah, no, go on. Uh, we used to do a lot of fun taste tests. Yum. Competitions at the farm in those days. So like um, we would uh, – maybe this was like maybe the last year of the farm – the dollar store used to have all of those like Twix ish bars, and so we used to do taste tests, real or not real, um, no name or not no name. Cool. We liked a lot of those. Um, we love Uno. Okay. We had a lot of Uno at the farm because we actually had a round table. We played a game called Oh. Sh-. Okay, I'll have to bleep that You'll out. You'll have to bleep it out. Okay. It's too bad because it really is a good game. Um, we played a lot of um, Tao Rummy. I mean, get out of here, Tao Rummy. All right. 
Mm, yeah, so we also played a lot of games. And you would go cross country skiing the next cross day. Cross country skiing, we cross because we had trails that we built. And what would you see when you cross country skiing? Trees, hills, squirrels. That's it. Cool. That's it. The yeah, not really. Yeah, there was railroad tracks that oh, got that's taken it. out. Okay. So that was a trail, and then hills through the forest, um, the enchanted forest. It wasn't actually enchanted. Okay. But it felt like magical. It, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was a magical forest, and then you'd go up down through all the trees, and then you'd come up to the farm. It took uh, probably a solid twenty minutes. So sometimes you'd do the loop like four or five times. Well, that's a wonderful sort of tour of Christmas with Natasha Boomer on and off the farm. Yeah. And uh, oh, electric fence tobogganing. Oh, do I even ask what is that as we, as we what, close out? That's where the fence is really the electric fence is on for the horses, mm-hmm. and you have to go down this huge hill, and you have to go under the fence. Isn't that dangerous? Yeah, totally dangerous. Okay, well, here's to hoping that you're safe when you're electric fence tobogganing. And Natasha, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, however you celebrate it, on or off the farm, eating your egg casserole. Yeah. And we wish you all the best. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. This is The Insomnia Project, our holiday episodes, a little departure from our regular episodes. We hope you enjoyed this, and we hope you have a wonderful holiday, however you celebrate it, and you're able to chill, enjoy, and sleep.